Oil and gas development has long played an important role in New Mexico's economy, but many New Mexicans are wary of new mining and drilling. They're raising questions about long-term damage to the environment and human health. Journalist Laura Pascas has written about the environment here in New Mexico for several years. She's currently producing radio stories for KUNM's Drilling Deep series that zooms in close on oil and gas development in the northwestern part of our state. She's also written about the development around Chaco Canyon for the Santa Fe Reporter. Our producer, Sarah Gustava, sat down with Laura Pascas to hear what she's learned. Laura, thanks for sitting down with us today. Thanks for having me, Sarah. First, for those of us maybe in Albuquerque and Santa Fe who don't spend much time in northwestern New Mexico, tell us what we would see if we drove out there right now. You've been driving out quite a bit for your reporting. What would we see on the way there? I think one of the most important things to think about is that you would see a lot of change. It's constantly changing. If you've driven up 550 toward Farmington, you're headed up to Durango or someplace like that. Um, once you get past Cuba and kind of crest over the Continental Divide toward Counselor and Lybrook, there's been a lot of development probably in the last six months or so. So you'll see rigs out there, lands being cleared, lots of semis, um, big green tanks with nitrogen or water. And you'll kind of see that all the way up through um, past Counselor and Lybrook and toward the turnoff for Chaco Canyon. Are the roads more crowded now than they were before? The roads are really crowded. Um, you know, a few years ago, the state widened that highway from two lanes to four lanes, but it is a constant, um, constant movement of the big energy trucks and then also big tanker trucks that are, you know, bringing the product to market or bringing wastewater or whatever. It's very busy. And if you're a reporter standing on the side of the road trying to take pictures, super busy. <laughs> One of the things that's interesting about your series drilling deep so far is that you went up in a plane to get an aerial view of, of what was happening. What did you learn from that experience of being up there? I learned that even though I've lived in New Mexico for almost 20 years, I just don't have a sense of the scale and landscape and development up in the four corners. You know, when you drive Highway 550, you see, you know, you might see some pump jacks on the side of the road or a trailer or house here and there. Um, but it really, just driving that highway, you have this sense of just this openness and vast, empty desert. But really, once you're up above and looking down, um, it's really amazing to see the amount of development in that area. There are about 22,000 natural gas wells and somewhere around 100 new oil wells. And so each well has a road that goes to it. They, most of them have their own waste ponds. You see the traffic. It's just this, um, just this spider web, really shocking to see from the air. One of the other really cool things is that from the air you can also see the prehistoric developments. It's really sort of interesting and exciting to see, um, you know, whether it's the Chacoan complex up there, the big great houses or the roads, the ancient roads. It's all just visible from up there. It's really quite stunning. Right next to each other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about some of the people that you met. Some of those people are, are descendants um, of people who've been in the area for generations and generations. What are they saying about this new development up in that area? So a lot of the women I've met up there, and it's, it really has been women in particular who I've been meeting up there who are actively opposing new development, um, who are worried about what a new oil industry up there would mean for communities and for water and the environment. And they're worried about, um, you know, the, the noise and potential for crime that comes with increased development and more workers coming into the area. But they're also really worried about health impacts from um, air emissions. And I think that one of the overwhelming feelings I get is people are, are really afraid of what might happen to their water supplies. And they're just, um, what I hear is they're not getting the information they need to, to understand what's happening. Now, are these native communities up there? These are. These women who I've been meeting with, they're all Navajo, and they live um, in the area. Their families have lived in the area for generations. It's really powerful in your series for KUNM, the voices of some of those women, like Victoria Gutierrez. She talked about the flares that, that you can see in the area. Especially at night, when you drive through here, it just 
it, you know, it just it's enough to make you just cry. One of the ladies was saying this place looks like, like a war zone. It's just completely lit up. Uh, all you see are flames everywhere, and you smell that that gas, that 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 burning, that just it's just it's it's just ugly. There's a lot of passion and a lot of concern and fears, and you know people talk about their history and how they've been there for generations, and so they have seen the landscape change. Their families, for many generations, have felt the impacts of development, whether it's coal or oil and gas or uranium mining, and so you know these are also people who aren't just going to move away. You know that's that's where their families are, where their roots and their history. Tell us a little bit about Sarah Jane White. Sarah Jane White, she's an interesting lady. Um, she is just amazing in her ability to sort of tie all these issues together. She's just in the few conversations I've had with her, she's helped me understand the, the place, um, the importance of place for people, um, for the Navajo people, for her family, and what it meant to be um, living in that area and then to be forcibly removed by the United States government during the late 19th century when the, the long walk happened and, and what it was like to come back, to come home, and how important protecting that home is today. Right now there's healthy people living here. The air is fresh. It's clean. This is going to be turned into a trash dump. Oil trash dump. That's what's going to happen to. When they're done sucking everything out, everybody's going to pack up and leave and leave their trash behind. Nobody's going to clean it up. And that's what bothers me. You know, oil and gas is a big part of New Mexico's economy right now. It's um, also an economic driver for the state. When you talk to the companies, how are they addressing concerns from the community, concerns about water, other, other concerns that people might have about this new development? I think in some ways there's a lack of communication, and I think part of it is that it is a really controversial issue. And and I've met some really nice people within the oil and gas industry, people who do care um, and who do want to make the best decisions for for New Mexico and for their families and for the future too. I think it's just unfortunate and, and it seems like it, it becomes, the issues just become more polarized all the time where people, um, there's misinformation out there, there's a lack of communication, there's a lot of um, just people who feel like they can't get along. And I think if we all maybe sat down and talked a little more um, clearly with one another, there would, some of those misunderstandings could get um, taken care of. Also, you've covered a proposed pipeline in the area. What, are you, what do we know about that so far? So the pipeline would be a pretty big deal on the industry side and also from the state of New Mexico. What I've heard is that the, the importance for that pipeline is to get product to market because there isn't an infrastructure in the northwestern part of the state for oil. It's all natural gas infrastructure. And so getting that product to market um, quicker and, and what the industry and the state say is safer like we talked about the traffic that would a pipeline would obviously cut down on a lot of that traffic but there are safety concerns with pipelines we've seen pipeline um, accidents and spills but this would be a new pipeline so you know if it were constructed hopefully it would be solid and there wouldn't be accidents but I think um, a big concern with the pipeline is not only it would be going through you know people's lands or um, the potential for environmental impacts it might have on wildlife or even real estate in the area, but um, but that by putting that new pipeline in, it would really be um, just opening up the potential for more and more drilling. And so I think that's a big concern for people who live in the area and for environmental groups who are opposing the pipeline. 
What are you going to be looking at next in your series? So next, I'm actually really excited. I'm sure lots of your viewers have heard about the methane anomaly in the Four Corners, um, one of the biggest hotspot for methane emissions in the United States is in the Four Corners. So I'm going to be learning more about where that methane is coming from, what the federal and state agencies are doing about addressing that. Um, so that's one looking at the economics of the Four Corners and also taking a look more intensely at flaring and the impacts of flaring. Laura Paskus, thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah.